grail of Christmas gifts, the Red Ryder 200-shot range model air rifle. Good morning. Ralphie was so thrilled to see that BB gun, and I'm thrilled that you're here today. Let us stand and sing, Oh Come, Oh Come, Emmanuel, hymn number 211. Now turn to your neighbors and give them a big old Christmas hug. Now, if you would please turn to hymn number 218, and we're going to sing, It Came among, Upon a, the Midnight Clear. If I can get that.
may be seated. And for our last hymn, we will sing the first Noel, hymn number 245. Noel, 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 God, I love a song like that this morning. So I uh, do want to welcome every one of you to worship today. It is so good to see every single one of you. I commend you for your faithfulness on a Sunday when a lot of people would choose to remain at home. It's just so good to see each and every one of you here today. I do want to ask you to please take a moment and complete your attendance pads. Please sign in your name, address, and your phone number. We would appreciate that. This time, I want to call upon Ray Cecil. He has a presentation he wants to make. It's on. It's on. Thank you very much, Ray, and thank you to all the United Methodist men for your hard work uh, and uh, for your generosity. So, uh, a couple things I do want to share with you today. Uh, the youth still have an event planned for 2.30 today here at the church, so keep that in mind. Also, applications for the uh, February summit trip for the youth are due next Sunday, December the 15th. Uh, Tuesday evening is the United Methodist Women's Combined Christmas Party. Please see the bulletin for more information about that. Uh, next Sunday, during the worship service, we will receive our gift to the Christ Child offering. We ask everyone to be in prayer about making a contribution above and beyond your normal uh, tithes and giving. 
We'll have a special time in the worship service when we can present those gifts. Uh, next Sunday night, uh, December the 15th at 6 p.m. is our love feast. And so we invite all of you to come out for that. Also invite a friend for that very special service. Uh, the Youth and Children's Christmas Program is Saturday evening, December 21st at 6 p.m. Uh, rehearsals will be at the end of Sunday school each Sunday. And then the next afternoon rehearsal is next Sunday afternoon, the 15th, at 4 p.m. here in the sanctuary. So I did want to share those things with you. Uh, last Sunday, we kicked off what we're celebrating this Christmas, and that is a Hollywood Christmas. Last Sunday, we looked at uh, the gospel according to Linus as we looked at uh, a Charlie Brown Christmas. Today, it is a Christmas story with a gift for you. Next Sunday's message is called Have a Very Merry Mayberry Christmas. We're going to look at the uh, Christmas episode of the Andy Griffith Show. And then two weeks from today, we're going to find out how Jesus wants to give every one of us a wonderful life as we look at that Christmas classic. So just wanted to share that with you. Please be in prayer about this. Invite a friend. I know it's going to be a, a blessing to all of us. Well, as we started things last week, uh, we have a character from each of the Hollywood productions that we're going to focus upon they're going to actually lead us in lighting the advent wreath so with no further ado i just want to say here comes santa claus <laughs> wow, Merry Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Merry Christmas. Oh, I, now I see why some of you fellas stop asking for tones. <laughs> it's been on your list in a while. Oh, look up there, little Craig Grimmett. You can send all the letters you want for that heart. They go to the Wizard of Oz. That's Emerald City. I have nothing to do with that. It's for me and your master. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Love the children. Look, little Debbie Richard Kennedy. Well, 
said, make sure you, I didn't hand it to you in church. If you didn't shoot your own eye out, you'd probably shoot the eye out of some of these people right here. So we're going to get up here so you can get out to the shooting range. Well, everybody seems to think Christmas is all about Santa Claus these days. All about the stuff they get. I mean, as fine a gift as there is, like a leg lamp or a, a Red Ryder BB gun, they're not the main gift. Santa Claus is not the main character. The main gift is the manger gift. God sent us His very Son. All those years ago, Emmanuel, God with us. As I light this candle, I want us to think about the manger gift. The main gift that God gave us His Son. A baby in Bethlehem, lying in a manger. To be our bridge. This was God's plan for our salvation. If Santa Claus don't want to burn his beard off. For our salvation. From the, the beginning of, even before the beginning of time. So this Christmas, when we think about the main gift we'd like to have, just think about the manger gift. The gift that God sent each and every one of us to be the bridge between Jesus Christ, to be the bridge between us and our Father God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this Christmas season. Help us to fill our hearts with just the glow of your Son, the love of Jesus Christ, who came to us to show us love and peace and joy and be that light and be our salvation. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Well, you know something else? Since Santa Claus likes children, how about y'all come on down? Let's talk a little bit. That be good? Let's see who's on the nice list. All right, everybody that's naughty, come over here. Ah, I got you, didn't I? Oh. Everybody that's naughty, 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 naughty. Yeah, that's right, Joseph. That's right. Now, y'all can gather around. Yeah, all you guys are on the nice list, and I know you are, because I see the list. My head elf lets me look at it occasionally, because I've, I've been watching you. I've been watching you. We've got all kind of stuff going on here today, don't we? Well, you know what? Let me ask you this. Do you guys write Santa Claus a letter and tell him what, what you want yeah. for Christmas? Do you? You need to write Santa Claus a letter because he loves letters. In fact, some of these might have come from some of you guys. Let's, let's, how about if we read a few of the things that, that, that some of you guys are asking for for Christmas? It might give you some ideas to put on your list. What do you think? Somebody writes, could you come by early this year? I've been really super good, but I don't know if I can last much longer. Dear Santa, Mommy says that you only bring presents to the good little boys. That isn't fair. I've been really good all year long, but don't ask Mommy and Daddy if it's true. Mmm, you think they'd tell on you? What's some of the things you guys want this year? What do you want, Joseph? Easy bake oven. Well, when you get, if Santa brings you that, you call that Miss Debbie and have her come over and help work with it, okay? I want an army, man. army man collection. That sounds good. I want a oh, and might I remind you fellas that G.I. Joe's a cool doll, but it is a doll. Dear Santa, I would just like one of everything. That sound like some of you guys? Yeah, it sounds like me sometimes. But you know, sometimes some of you guys write me and ask for things for other people. Let me explain. Dear Santa, can you please help the homeless children have a good Christmas with at least something really good to eat 
and maybe a small toy for them to love? <laughs> Dear Santa, I would like if you'd bring a toy for my little friend at school. They don't have a lot of money. So if you can't, I can give her one of mine. Now isn't that nice? That's filling the Christmas spirit. Thank you, Santa, for making toys for little kids. Thank you to God for making Santa so he could make things for little kids. See, we don't think about that sometimes. God made everything, even Santa Claus. See? Listen to this one. Dear Santa, I think you're the best person in the whole wide world, and I love you so much. I'm glad that you and Jesus get along well. Well, you know what? Christmas is about believing. It's about believing in Santa Claus. It's about believing in Jesus. It's about believing. Not necessarily seeing Santa Claus, not necessarily seeing Jesus right there in front of you, but believing and knowing it's real, just like Jesus was real. He came to us as a baby on Christmas. It's his birthday. You guys know that, right? Yes. Yes, okay. Well, this Christmas, we want to think about baby Jesus is the main thing in a manger, okay? All right, let's pray. And then every child's going to go, all the young people are going to go off to children's church and get to learn about your Christmas program because Santa loves Christmas program. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you again for all these young children. We thank you for their parents who... See the Christmas season as your birthday, Lord. Thank you for their hearts to bring their kids here and help them to hear and know what is real, what is the main thing in this Christmas season. Just continue to lead them and guide them into this Christmas season that their hearts be filled with joy and peace and love. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, everybody's going to Children's Church. Merry Christmas, everybody. Come on, watch these things. Come on, Joseph. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. That's an act to follow. <laughs> Our scripture this morning is taken from the second chapter of Luke, uh, verses 8 through 11. And there were angels living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. As we continue our worship, let us join our hearts in prayer. And our call to prayer is hymn number 204 in the Methodist hymnal. That is also our response to prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we come before you now in, in the quiet of this moment. 
leaving the hustle and the bustle of the world around us outside. And in this moment, as we worship and as we praise your holy name, we recognize the greatness of, of this time of year. The great sacrifice that you're giving to us. Sometimes we're like the shepherds, our Father. We're terrified at, at this event, but help us to calm down and to listen to what you say. Don't be afraid, you said, because this time, this little child is going to bring salvation not only to the Jews, but to all of mankind. This unimportant event in the world has changed it. You have changed us and help us in this season to recognize that change. Help us to be interested in in the kindness and the love and the care and the compassion that you showed on that event in, in the city of David. Help us to remember that event because that led to us knowing God a little bit better and that also led to the cross. And that is our salvation. Help us to remember this baby. Help us to remember his life and his sacrifice because he's the one that we should be like. And he taught us, as, as he taught his disciples, how to be like him and how to pray to you when we come before you. Because he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, out of gratitude for the great gifts that you've bestowed upon us, for the birth of the Christ child, out of that gratitude we now give back to you a portion of that, praying that you will use it in the furtherance of thy kingdom. For we ask this in thy son's name. Amen.
Ralphie, what would you like for Christmas? Horrified. I hurt myself, blurted out. I want an official Red Rider Carbon Action 2 and Jet Wings Ball Air Rifle. <laughs> no, no, I want an official Red Rider Carbon Action 2 and Jet Wings Ball Air Rifle. That was Ralph Parker as he experiences his greatest Christmas gift ever. Now, I know Ralph, or Ralphie as he's better known. He's a fictional character now, isn't he? He's the main character in a story called A Christmas Story. It's set about the year 1940. It's in the fictional town of Holman, Indiana. And it pretty much traces what happens with Ralphie through the Christmas season of that year. We find out he's a pretty ordinary kid, isn't he? He has to go to school. He has to write essays about what he wants for Christmas. He has to stand up to bullies. He has a friend who gets his tongue to a flagpole. We all have friends like that, right? He has a little baby brother that loves to play with his food. And on top of all of that, he has a father who has won a major award, just like Bruce Webb, in the form of a leg lamp. You have all these different episodes in the story now, don't you? But the common thread that runs throughout the whole story is this. It is Ralphie and his infatuation with that one gift that he wants more than anything else. And what he wants more than anything else is an official Red Rider Carbon Action 200-shot model range air rifle. Better yet known to us as a Red Rider BB gun. And as you just saw, Santa may have to help me there, but as you just saw on the video clip, he does receive that gift in the end. And you know, it's in the closing scene of the movie that he's falling asleep, clutching that BB gun. And he says it was the greatest gift that he had ever received or would ever receive. I want you to think about your Christmas memories this morning. I want you to think back over your life and, and what is the greatest Christmas present that you have ever received in your life? I remember a story mom and dad would always tell me about my older sister Natalie. She was she's two years older than I am. When she was about four years old, this would make it about 1966. And what she longed for that Christmas was a baby first step doll. I never had one of those, but maybe some of you did. But she so much wanted that that when it came to Christmas Eve, mom and dad happened to walk by her bedroom, and there she was kneeling beside her bed, and she prayed, asking God to give her 
a baby first step doll. To her, that was the ultimate gift. What's the ultimate gift that you have ever received at Christmas? And what is that favorite special Christmas memory that's attached to it? Well, as you think about that, let's all remember together. And let's all celebrate together this morning that the greatest gift of all, it is the person of Jesus Christ. And that's what I want us to really look at today. I want us to think about that, and I want us to look at the whole question, and that is, what kind of gift is Jesus? Think about that just a moment, and let's look at that together. First thing I want to tell you about the kind of gift that Jesus is, and that is that Jesus is the kind of gift that was purchased at a supreme price. He was purchased at a supreme price, wasn't he? You see, if you think about the person of Jesus, you cannot get away from the word sacrifice, can you? Now, as we think about Jesus and as we think about sacrifice, typically we go to the story of the crucifixion, don't we? How Jesus went to the cross and and there he took upon himself the punishment for our sins and he died there but then rose again from the dead. And yes, that was the ultimate act of sacrifice for Jesus. But let's look at his entire life. Because his entire life, it was about sacrifice. Jesus didn't come into existence in Bethlehem. Jesus has been in existence forever and ever. There he was in heaven with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. But what did he do? Because he loves you, loves me so much, he gave up everything in heaven. He sacrificed all that beauty, all that perfection, everything that's great and wonderful about heaven, and he came into this world to live with us. That sacrifice. He was born in Bethlehem, and he began to go through all of life as we know it. He began to sacrifice all along the way. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, it says, Though he possessed all heavenly riches, he became poor for our sake. That's the sacrificial spirit he lived out. As he began to go through every bit of life as a child, as a teenager, a young adult. As he found out what it was like to be hungry and thirsty. What it was like to be lied to, betrayed, let down, rejected. And yes, as he found out what human suffering was all about when he went to the cross. And died there and then rose again. You see, Jesus, his life was one sacrifice after another. And from that life of sacrifice was purchased the gift that he wants to offer every one of us. As we think about Jesus, as we think about the kind of gift he is, the first thing we've got to know, he's the gift that was purchased at a supreme price. Second thing I want you to take with you today as we think about Jesus and the kind of gift that he is, Jesus is the kind of gift that we desperately need. We desperately need Jesus, don't we? One of my favorite Christmas songs, along with Oh, What a Beautiful Child, is is Oh, Holy Night. And there's a line in that song that simply says, Long lay the world in sin and air pining. Now, I know that's some very outdated language, isn't it? But you know what it means to us? It means here was planet earth here was this world that we live in living in sin and error and pining and by pining it means repining you know what image pops in my mind when i hear that word stretched out in a recliner very restful very comfortable as jesus was about to come into this world this whole world we were comfortable with our disobedience toward God. And we were comfortable with all the many ways that we put ourselves at the center of the whole universe. That's the situation, though, that Jesus came to enter into this world. You see, way back at creation, the human race was created that all of us would have a close and personal relationship with God. But beginning with Adam and Eve in the garden, as they disobeyed God, as they sinned, that trickled down to every one of us. We are born with a nature that wants to shy away from God and run from God and disobey God. And we live out that nature through all kinds of behaviors. And part of the consequences of all that is it creates a separation in our relationship with God. 
we're desperately in need of some kind of intervention. And it was in response to that desperate need that God came and wrapped himself up in human flesh and lived with us in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, he did do a lot of great things when he was in the world. He performed a lot of great miracles. He told a lot of great stories. He healed many people. But the supreme act that led him into this world was that he would one day go to a cross, suffer and die there, and rise again. And why? By taking upon himself the punishment for all of our sins, that opened up the opportunity for all of us to be forgiven. For all of us to have a new life, a new beginning, to live life with a joy and a peace and a hope and a purpose, and to find out what real love is all about. And yes, to live with the assurance of everlasting life in heaven one day. We desperately need all of that, don't we? And Jesus is the kind of gift that fulfills that very desperate need. What kind of gift is Jesus? Well, let's keep on looking at what kind of a gift he really is. Next, I want to tell you, Jesus is the kind of gift that we need to, we must decide to receive. Jesus is the kind of gift we must decide to receive. You know how much Jesus loves every one of us? Yes, he loves us enough to give up heaven to come and live with us in this world. And yes, he loves us so much that he would go through everything in life we'll ever face so we can never say we're alone and he doesn't understand. He loves us so much that he would go to a cross and die for us. He loves us so much that he would rise again from the dead. But you know how else he displays his real love upon us? He loves us so much that he won't force his love upon us. He won't force himself upon us. We've got a decision to make in relation to all that Jesus has already done for us. The longest telling of the Christmas story is found in Luke chapter 1 and Luke chapter 2. We read of it some in Matthew chapter 1. Very little in Mark's gospel. John's gospel simply says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. But you know there's other parts of the New Testament that tell us about when Jesus was born. One of those is Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. It says there, in the fullness of time, God brought forth his son, born of a woman. In the fullness of time. In some translations, it says at just the right time. And that's true, wasn't it? God knew of the exact time that this world was in need of the person of Jesus, and there was no holding him back at that moment in time as he came into this world. But now that he has come and lived and died and risen again and ascended to heaven, he will not force himself upon us. We've got a decision to make. In John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, even to those who believed in his name, they gave the right to become children of God. Have you received him? Have you made a decision to believe in him? Have you invited him into your heart and your life? Have you given your whole life over to him? That's the decision every one of us must make regarding the gift that, that Jesus is. What kind of gift is Jesus? He's the kind that we must decide to receive. Let me tell you more about the gift that Jesus is. Jesus is the kind of gift that grows into more than you could ever dream. That's right, he grows into more than you could ever dream of. You know, many times as Christians, I've told you before, a lot of people, they'll make a decision to believe in Jesus. They'll say, I've got Jesus in my heart. That means that when I die, I'm going to heaven one day. And that's great. That's a great promise of the gospel. But as I've told you, sometimes there's many decades between saying yes to Jesus and goodbye to this world. And there's so much that Jesus wants to do in our lives in those times. Foremost among those, he wants us to grow. He wants us to grow in our trust for Jesus. He wants us to grow in our closeness to Jesus. He wants us to grow so close to him that he begins to rub off upon us. And we begin to live like him. And we begin to look like him. 
And people hear him in the very words we speak and see him in the very things that we do. And hark the herald, the angels sing. One of the lines says, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Jesus came to give us a second birth, as the Bible says, to be born again, to have a brand new life. But we are not born again to stop right there. We are born so that we can experience a new life to the fullest and grow into the men and the women that God wants us to be. He wants to bless us all along the way. He wants to gift us. He wants to give us talents and abilities to use for him because he has a purpose for every single one of us. You see, Jesus is the kind of gift that grows into more than you could ever what kind of gift is Jesus? Keep on looking with me. Because what you'll find out is that Jesus is also the kind of gift that is never fully received until given away. Almost a contradiction, isn't it? Because you think about a favorite gift you have received at Christmas. You think about how special it was to you and how you still have it hidden in a box somewhere or up on a bookshelf. It is my gift, and that is that special gift in my life. But not so with Jesus. Because the true measure that we have Jesus in our hearts and in our lives is in our willingness to give him away. As I told you last Sunday, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we've got to look at more than just how he was born in Bethlehem. We've got to celebrate his entire life. How he did live, how he did die, how he rose again from the dead. And you know, when he rose again from the dead over six weeks, he showed himself to so many different people. And then it came that time for him to return to heaven. And before he did that, you know what he did in the Gospel of Matthew? He gathered those 11 remaining disciples together, and he says, you've been my disciples, my followers for these three years now. He says, now go. And make disciples, followers of me, from all of the nations of the world. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, Jesus said to his remaining disciples, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon me. And you will be my witnesses right here in Jerusalem and throughout Judea, over to Samaria, and to the ends of the whole earth. And that's who we are to be. We are to be witnesses for Jesus. And we're to make disciples of the entire world. We have the greatest news of all to celebrate, don't we? To tell the whole world about the love of Jesus and the life of Jesus and the death of Jesus and his glorious resurrection. To tell the world what a difference that's made in our lives and the difference it can make in their lives too. We've got to communicate that to our world. First and foremost, by the way we live our lives. But then we've got to speak up and to tell people in this world who Jesus is and what he can do in any person's heart, in any person's life. And that's the evidence that we have received him into our hearts and our lives. That is, in giving him away. Jesus is some kind of gift, isn't he? He's the greatest gift of all. This week I, I got curious about it, so I started looking at it online about Christmas and gift giving. All the different traditions around the world, all those special givers like Santa Claus and Kris Kringle and Father Christmas, all the, the cultural practices all around the globe. And as I traced it back further and further, it even went back to the three wise men bringing gifts to the baby Jesus. But finally, it traced its beginnings back to God, our Heavenly Father himself. And how in giving his son, he was the ultimate gift of all. Did you hear the Christmas story as Gary was reading it earlier? It, it happens as those shepherds are out all alone and the angel appears to them. The nighttime sky is filled up with all of these lights. And they're scared to death, and rightly so. 
So the angel says, do not be afraid. I bring you glad tidings of great joy that will be for all the people. And the angel tells them what that great news is. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And then the angel even gives a vivid description of who to look for in that town. But you know in this greatest of all birth announcements, there's two words that are so easy to overlook. That's when the angel says, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. To you. Yes, he came as the Savior of the whole world. But he also came as God's greatest gift to each one of you. This past Monday night, Lou Ann and Emily and I, we sat down and we watched the movie, A Christmas Story. After 10 minutes, uh, Emily was bored to death and found something else to do. But Lou Ann and I, we thoroughly enjoyed the movie. I loved it. Kind of sentimental. It was my dad's favorite Christmas movie because it kind of took place when he was a kid and been kind of a rough week. He passed away three years ago yesterday, and I thought about him a lot. But as I got to the end of the movie, I I thought they gave this a great name, A Christmas Story. Because by giving the word A, that indefinite pronoun, an indefinite article, it was saying it is one Christmas story among many. Because there's hundreds, there's thousands of Christmas stories, and we all have our favorite, and we know why they mean so much to us. But as I think about a Christmas story and all of the Christmas stories out there, let's realize something. There's only one that can be called the Christmas story. And that's the story of the birth of Jesus. The one who is the greatest gift that you can ever have. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the gift that you are. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for the way that you love freely and unconditionally. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, your salvation. And the way you freely offer it to us as we choose to believe in you and give our lives to you. Lord, we are so thankful and we receive all that you give right now. Help us now to live with you and your love in our hearts as we live a life that shows the world all that you have given. We ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. We're going to close this morning by singing, O come, all ye faithful, as we're going to be singing, the altar's open, if you want to come and kneel and pray. You may want to come and pray, and you just may want to say, thank you, Jesus, for the gift you are. And thank you for the price you paid, the sacrifices you made to be the gift that you are. You may want to come and pray today and say, Lord Jesus, I desperately need you today. I need you in my heart and my life. Or I have a special need I want to bring to you. You may want to come and pray today and say, Lord, I need to make a decision. To give my life wholeheartedly to you. And trust every bit of life with you. You may want to come and pray and say, Jesus, thank you for the gift that you are. Now help me to grow into that child of yours, that follower of yours that you want me to be. You may want to just pray today and say, Lord Jesus, now that you're in my heart and in my life, help me to share you with everyone in my world. You come as we sing, O come, all ye faithful, and let's stand as we sing.
And what a beautiful angelic choir this morning singing, Oh, come, all ye faithful. But the time has come to say, Now go, all ye faithful. Go, all ye faithful, from this place, sharing with the world that you have received the greatest gift of all, that of Jesus Christ. Amen.